Today is a good day for a fight. In the last video, I looked at thumbnailing a dialogue sequence. Today, I want to look at laying out a few pages worth of a fight scene. Uh, I'll give you a little bit of story context. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about the sort of the value of doing a fight scene. I'll also address uh, how to control pacing in a comic and how to keep your readers flipping those pages, as well as some of the considerations that go into choosing panel shapes. Some other fun topics that we encounter include how to make a character look like they're balanced or off balance, uh, as well as a sort of briefly touching on the 180 degree rule from film and storyboarding and whether or not you really particularly have to pay attention to that when you're working on a comic book. Mainly we'll be looking at two pages from chapter four of Practical Defense Against Piracy. Um, with a little bit of a lead-in from the previous page and a little bit of a, uh, the outcomes or the results on the following pages. I've prepared some of these in advance because a lesson I learned is that if you try and make it all up on the fly, um, it ends up taking a really long time. So hopefully this will be a leaner video than the last one. There will be story spoilers for Practical Defense Against Piracy, uh, but nothing that's gonna nothing that's gonna break your spirit trust me so with that in mind uh let's get going here's the story context we have we have a lovely little town a lovely little mediterranean town which has been invaded by pirates the pirates have made their way to the bridge which separates the two sides of the town and they have planted a flag there the captain of the Good ship Cordelia, Her Majesty sailing vessel Cordelia, which is anchored in the harbor, uh, is frightened. He's frightened for his ship, um, and he runs out onto the bridge to confront the pirate flag bearer. That is, I think, everything we need to know. Um, after the last video I posted, I received a lot of emails saying, we wish you would post longer videos. 90 minutes is not enough um but i'm very busy and it takes a long time to edit a 90 minute video together so for this fight sequence i have prepared some thumbnails already uh, i'm going to be working at the tail end of this page um, and i'm primarily going to focus on this page pages 18 and 19 um, and then wrap up with page 20 up here so we have a pirate on the bridge planting a flag with the captain running out from the gates from the gates of defend the town and the captain is going to the captain is so full of, of fear and so terrified that he's going to challenge the pirates head on so at the end of page 17 there This is an 11 by 17 sheet of paper, just regular Xerox paper. This is a big mechanical HB number two pencil. So at the end of page 17, or on page 17, we have, um, we have Alexander, this is tangential, but it's a good context here. At the end of page 17, we have Alexander squeezing through the gates. We see um, the figure of the pirate flag bearer here, um, trying to reassure the captain that your, your ship is safe. It's not going to be, everybody's being well taken care of. Um, the flag bearer is very well spoken. The flag bearer is very polite. Um, in the center panel here, we lay out our scene clearly. We have Alexandra in the foreground. Um, her father very nearby, so making a connection between the two of them. We see this little sketchy figure here is the captain running towards the pirate, who is that small figure there holding this giant pirate flag right at the apex of the bridge. 
so <clears throat> let's say let's say that panel I just described occupies this space. Um, I have two variations here on what I'm going to do with this final row. And I think I'm going to go with the second option, which sort of divides. I'm just trying to find some nice proportions that I like here. Divides it like that. Now, a friend asked, how do you choose your panel shapes? The guiding principles for deciding how to approach a page, at least for me, are one, so your reader, you're making a comic, your reader is going to open this book. You as the author have very few tools at your disposal to control the pacing at which your reader consumes your story or, or moves through your page. One of those is the page turn. The page turn is our opportunity to surprise the reader. So for example, on this page, when we turn the page, uh, there's a big explosion on the aqueduct here. Um, if I put that, if I put this image on this page, then the reader would see all of this before, you know, before whatever was here, for example. So the only way to deliver that impact of a big surprise is to put it behind a page turn. Reader turns the page, boom, there it is. The other thing, the other way we try to control pacing is this bottom right corner. This is the last thing our reader is going to see on these two pages. And I want, I want the reader to take in this bottom corner. I want them to, to find a question there. I want, or, or I want it to spark the reader's curiosity. In this case, uh, we have this final row here. Uh, she laughs, feeling confident. We see a mysterious burst of smoke in the distance and a startled look on her face. She also says, says a line that hints at their destruction incoming. So hopefully, ideally, that puts in the reader's mind the idea that something is about to happen. And they have to override the part of their brain that wants to close this book and go back to their Twitter feed, go back to Instagram to go do chores, go eat, go sleep. We override all of that because the reader is too curious to know what happens on the next page. And then we turn the page and we surprise them with this, uh, with whatever you have to surprise them with. Um, so those are the, the two major ways to control the pacing. The page turn, to reveal surprise, and leaving a question in this bottom right hand uh, corner. In this case, the question that we're going to give to the reader, or that we're going to encourage the reader to be asking, is by, by giving the captain a um, by upping his intensity and by putting him in a sort of attack pose, the reader is going to want to know, well, what is going to happen next? So I have a panel here of just his face, of him looking absolutely stark raving mad. Um, just enough to indicate to me what we want to do there. So we clearly see, oh, this guy is going over the bend. And then he, he breaks into, or he, we move him into a, this sword swinging posture, arm up, low angle to give him sort of uh, some ferocity, some, an imposing presence. The lighting in this sequence, um, is all pretty consistent and it's all coming from an eerie green glow. So the background behind him, an eerie green mist, which is 
swept through the town with the pirates. So we'll see the night sky behind him, and he'll be bright in the foreground, bright and vivid, um, probably with green uplighting and a red rim light around behind him because the other source of light here is flaming bales of hay and torches and that sort of thing. So there's the end of page 17. We're leaving the reader at the end of page 17 with a captain who has run towards the pirates and moved into an, is attacking. So let's get to I'm going to try to return to that question of how do I choose my panel or my pa uh, my panel layouts and my panel shapes. One thing I generally try to do is I try and keep everything rectangular and I try to I don't, I don't unless it's you know unless we're pushing the boat out for a holiday um by picking rectangular shapes, it, it gives you flexibility in case you need to reformat this comic for, uh, you know, a webtoon thing or breaking it up for Instagram or all that social media garbage. Um, and in this case, for this sequence, the concept I have for this sequence, the concept I have for this fight sequence, first of all, I want to try to deliver good value to the reader. Um, because of that, the thing I was describing earlier with the way the reader can open both pages and see everything at once, um, for a fight sequence, that means a reader can parse it all very quickly. And if there's nothing really to hold them or interest them, or if there's nothing unique happening within that fight, then unless the reader is feeling very generous, they can just take it all in and, and say, okay, great, they're fighting, let's just flip through and see who wins. In the case of this fight, I have two concepts that I want to include to make it feel valuable. One is that, and I'll get back to my, my panel breakdown in just a sec, but, but I wanna illustrate this concept. One is that to convey the strength and the solidarity, solidarity, the strength and solidity of the pirates to make them feel like, to feel really imposing, really in control. I will be framing every shot, every panel on this page with the flag that the flag bearer is holding right in the middle of the page in every panel. And everybody's going to move around that sort of pivot point. The flag bearer will move around that, the captain will, will swirl around that. Everything that's gonna happen is gonna happen with the flag pole right in the center of each of these panels. Um, to sort of say, captain, you can do whatever you like, but this uh, these pirates are not going anywhere. Uh, so that's the first concept. Or, or, or design idea, the first fun idea that I want to put in this fight. Um, the second is that I want to show you that the, the pirates, and particularly the flag bearer, um, really means no, no harm. Or is at least, maybe that's not the right way to put it, but the flag bearer does not want any harm to come to the captain. The captain is attacking him. The captain's going to put himself at risk, and the flag bearer is going to save his life. Um, so with those two ideas, with the, the, the central strength of the flagpole and with the, um, the fun twist where, despite, despite the, pirate, uh, the captain's attack, the pirate still wants to, to keep him safe, with those two ideas, I'm hoping that this is a, a valuable and enjoyable fight fight sequence to read as a comic book, because it's it's not like it's not like film where where at literally every frame and every second is an opportunity for reveals and for for twists and turns and for uh, dazzling displays that sort of thing. So our our excitement will come from this design and from 
revealing this character of the pirates and also revealing how insane the captain is in wanting to continue to keep flailing away and attacking. Now, um, I've chosen to break it up into these, into basically five rows of panels here, just to sort of keep an even rhythm and, and also for it to be a constraint for our composition. And as well as if it were, if they were all different sorts of sizes and shapes, then I wouldn't be able to do this fun little flagpole in the middle type thing. Now we can go play within that. Um, I'm a big fan of constraints, uh, just giving yourself, giving yourself and telling yourself thing, you know, you can't do this is more often empowering, um, often gives you more than it takes away. So. Now to go back to our idea of controlling the pacing and surprising our readers as well as giving them a question to go on to the next page. I will start with the question, which is down in this corner here, down in the bottom corner. So I'm starting from the end of this two page spread. So the cap during this fight, during this fight that happens here, the captain will be knocked down, defeated basically. He'll lose his sword and He's going to he's going to grab a knife out of the, his boot at the end of the page, and so the question the question we're leaving the reader with is, you know, hey, he's demonstrated that he's not especially effective against the pirates. Um, he's got another weapon, but like, but what could possibly come of this? In this case, maybe he's backlit. Um, and we see the knife bright. Maybe it reflects the green light really bright. So that's our question. That, 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 and that's one of our limitations. That's one of our constraints. We got to get whatever happens in here. I want to get to this point here where the pirate ha or the captain has been knocked down. yet he's still going to try to attack again. That's our question to carry us through the, to the next page and keep people from wanting to check their social media feeds. In the panel previous to that, we need to show that the captain has been knocked down or the captain is splayed out on the ground. So we're setting ourselves up, putting him in a position where he could conceivably move to grab a knife knife and here we see the flag bearer strong confident unbothered by this whole circum by this whole exchange sort of standing over him looking down on him it's very clear that he's in charge and we get a a, a bit of a dramatic curl of the pirate flag here behind us sort of define our ground plane. That's all we need to indicate. So, pirate, confident, capable, captain, knocked down on the ground. Oh, and importantly, um, the pirate captain has lodged his sword in the flagpole. So that's our end, that's how the page ends. That's where we get to at the end. Um, I've got the, so I've got that story point where we want to talk about where we want to show the pirate saving the captain's life. We're going to stick that in here again to offer something interesting to pull the reader in right in the middle of the fight. Um, and we want to start off because again we we're coming from pirate attack or captain attacking. I want to start off and we're going to mirror that this sort of layout. Um, sometimes I like symmetry in the panel layout between the pages. Um, not all the time and not not a hundred percent symmetry, but sometimes it's nice to have those little echoes. And in here we're just going to very plainly see the in sharp perspective the sword bite into. Right into the flagpole. 
So that is the result of, or the outcome of the question that we asked at the end of this page. He's attacking, this is what happens, lunk, dun, dun, dun. and we're gonna see, we're gonna maintain that sword angle. So those, this angle here matches up with this angle here, and the captain with both hands on it, the coat flying, legs wide in a stance, um, and the flag bearer has deftly dodged out of the way. We know that he's dodged out of the way because we'll put him, we'll put his weight sort of off balance. <laughs> a bit, as I was working on this previously, I went, it's a little bit like a pole dancer, which honestly I don't hate. And he's got a sort of flappy thing that he wears around. He's basically nude, except for a blindfold. That's the other fun point. He's got a blindfold on. We see him dodging out of the way. The His costume trails behind him to illustrate his move. It's dragging, it's pulling. So we give him a nice pose that, that suggests, oh, he's deftly stepped out of the way. And we can have this pirate flag billowing behind him. We're leaving his silhouette clear. Uh, da, 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 da. And in behind them all, we see a number of the other pirates just watching, standing back, watching what's happen, happening. This is kind of like, this is kind of a callback or kind of a, an homage to some of those Howard Pyle pirate drawings. Um, where the guys are all just watching two guys fighting. In this case, they know Flag Bearer can handle himself. So you know, let's see what's happening. So those are the first two. So thinking about what order to tackle the rest of these panels in, because remember we have that point where we want to establish that the pirate is willing to prevent harm from coming to the captain. The question is where to put that. We could put that in here, but I want to build up the intensity of the fight here. So I thought I would give myself this sort of area to tell that part of the story and then give us a little bit of room here for a transition. So with that in mind, I do need some more panels just to give us a little bit more granular detail on the action that is happening. We're still going to have our flagpole right in the middle, but I'm going to give myself another little panel over here. Whatever the captain does here, probably a really violent attack. Whatever he does, he's going. it's going to make him stumble. We're going to see him off balance. The way to, in animation school, the way we learned how to communicate that a character was off balance was putting their sort of center mass outside of whatever point of contact they have with the ground. Um, basically, you know, if a character is two feet are on the ground, you put their waist in the middle and they look balanced. Ta -da. If you put their two feet on the ground and their waist off to the side, they look unbalanced. Um, if they have one point of contact and their center of balance is, again, off to the side, uh, they look off balance. So we get our captain tripping up. Um, and then we will see we we'll also pair that with a matching panel over here, which I'll get to in a sec, but we will see the pirate see the captain, see the captain's situation. And the captain's situation is exactly that he is. So we're gonna make sure that, so he's one scale, his feet, in person or one scale here, so we're gonna make sure that we're not repeating that, just to keep visual variety on the page. 
You're gonna see the captain struggling, flailing, because he has the danger that he has put himself in as he is about to tumble over the edge of the bridge here. I may or may not include the pirate flag in there. The pirate flag is one of those elements that you can cheat in or out, in or out of the panel. I don't think there's going to be any flag police coming along to worry about that too much. So, trip, more trip, pirate seas, more tripping, and then just to sort of reinforce the... the danger to the captain. I'm going to move our point of view outside of the bridge. So this is the outer wall of the bridge, and here's our poor captain. Small, balanced precariously on the railing of the bridge, and we'll see um, the night sky and probably the fortress in the background. We've established the sort of geography of the location previously so it should it should read okay once we get the details in there so we take our point of view out there say oh look how look how much danger he's in and then we're gonna see a close-up of exactly how because it's not because I'm gonna have a shot here shot uh, I'm gonna have a, a an illustration here of exactly how the um, I mean, huh, why, don't, why don't we just get in there and draw it? So the nimble flag bearer stretches himself. Let's see, and I've got to get the captain down here. So captain down there, flag bearer up here. Flag bearer up here stretches himself, reaches out with his leg to hook the captain's foot. So there's the flag bearer, stretching, reaching. Um, here's our captain, about to plummet to his death, flailing the railing for the bridge. Again, cheating that flag. I mean, it means, I guess, I guess it means I have to draw the stupid graphic on the flag every time I put in there soon, but putting the flag in there just to break up the space with something different. Now, so the problem here, obviously, is that at a glance, obviously, I don't know, um, at a glance, it might look like the pirate is kicking the captain over the edge. We don't want that mistake to be made, so we're going to have a close-up of, and we're talking these, like, movie we. I talk in these movie or or camera based terms because they're really handy. I was trained with them. I understand them. I don't know what else to call them. So go easy on me. So interlocking feet, the pirate with his bare feet, the boots of the captain, just giving some clarity on what's happening in this panel. I'm giving myself another panel here to give us a reaction from the captain, who's just this being saved by the pirate has only made him more furious. He's absolutely incapable of any sort of moderation in this situation. Um, so he'll he'll go rawr. We'll see how that's how he feels about having his life saved and he will Lunge with his sword which again gets stuck in the flagpole There he is with both of his hands. Oh, I guess he's got to still have his sword over here so, his hat, his arms, foreshortened, um, his coat, 
up behind him to sort of indicate the energy of his action. Um, I'm sort of leaning on my animation background to to give us some sort of or sort of like to help indicate the action, indicate the the, the movement of stuff. Um, clothing, dragging clothing and hair behind us as we move through these all these happenings. Um, helps to indicate, give life to it, make it feel energetic and lively and uh, believable. Now, this the pirate is not invincible. This and I also want to connect this idea, this the idea of this panel to the idea of this panel. So I do want to get the pirate looking a little bit off balance and I but more importantly I want his foot to sort of still be involved over there so so we'll get him sort of like that narrowly missing a slice from the sword um, make sure that that silhouette is clean so it doesn't look like one thing is Interfering with another, I'm here referring to my old one. We can billow the the flag out and around the captain. Again, I mean, that's not based on any real thing that would happen, but um, sort of g clears his silhouette and gives us a nice, the curves sort of contribute to a nice sense of movement. So captain attacks, he gets his... And then we want to say, hey, look, the sword has definitely been lodged into this flagpole. And we want the pirate to regain his calm, so we have him in a relatively calm posture pretty quickly. I guess the idea, the concept here between behind him, and I'm not, I'm not sure whether this reads super well, but... Um, the concept behind this action here is that the sword lodges in the pole and then the pirate twists the flagpole, which pulls the sword perhaps free from the captain's grasp. So we could connect the sword to his hand a little bit. It is coat up in the air here in a little bit of an abstract shape but just the, the abstractness of it and the sort of bizarre posture he's in will... It's, it looks out of control, it looks unhuman, inhuman. Um, and hopefully sells that idea of the spin. I mean, I'm also going to throw in one of these here because, you know, this the swish around. And we'll see the front of the pirate, so... You, the reader, can sort of connect him, connect his pivoting around the flag to this idea, because here's his back here, here's his front, and then here's his back, the back of the pirate. And we could use the pirate flag to help indicate this spinning movement. Reinforce it. Would that happen in real life? Not my problem. Actually, I should probably address one aspect of this, which is how are we choosing these, these angles? So let's see. If we were to stage this out, here's our bridge. Here's our flagpole. What we've seen so far is a uh, is that the captain maybe lunge, lunges this way, trips, is about to fall over the edge of the bridge here. He's caught by the pirate. The, pi the captain comes around, and the pirate dodges around the flagpole, and the captain ends up stumbling over here. And we see that from this point of view here as well as here, and then we see the captain over the edge of the bridge from this point of view, looking basically the opposite way. And this is a similar angle 
maybe for these two panels, but then we go back to, and we're in close on the captain, and then, yeah, it's sort of similar here. This is this might be the angle for that panel. And then we're basically looking, in these two panels, we're looking from this point of view. So we're throwing our point of view all over the place. Uh, but between these panels, the captain appears in very similar shapes in each of these panels. The same here, this is a close-up essentially of this panel. And when we sort of flip angles, we, we do still have the captain on the right here and the pirate on the left here. And we help to sell the idea of a spin by putting the, the movement of the spin. Oh, we can also do secondary, on, secondary action on his, his costume. Sell the idea of the spin by moving the pirate to the other side of the page and the captain to the other side. So spin, roll, reversal, yada, yada. It doesn't feel like the reader is going to get really lost here. I don't think. In storyboarding in film, if you have two characters and you already established their relationship here, say, let's see, there's a ground plane here. You already establish a, ground, a, a relationship between these two, then the old wisdom in film is to keep our camera, our point of view, on what it, wherever it is, on one side of this relationship. Um, <clears throat> so we can put our camera anywhere we want over here, because no matter where we put it, we're still going to have this guy on the left and this guy on the right. If we were to throw a camera back here, then from this camera's point of view, their orientation, their, the spatial relationship between them would be flipped, which is d typically disorienting to watch. But this is comics. Uh, so, well, this is definitely an idea that, that can help. It's not gonna. It's not gonna hurt your comic if you pay attention to these sorts of relationships. You can break it. You're not gonna push readers away if you break that uh, that one one hundred and eighty degree that that line that relationship between the two things you've established. So this basically gives us um, some nice opportunity just to do some fight imagery. Basically, there is another thing I want to get in here because we do want to see Alexandra and her dad in this situation, establish sort of where they are and establish that the dad, the dad is saying to the captain, please, hey, stop, rein it in, bring it back, um, which I'm going to stick in this panel here. Uh, and Alexandra is worried about her dad getting too close to the fight. And that's all going to happen in this one panel here because... I'm going to give us a panel to establish that fighting is continuing, and I want panels after that to con to keep telling the story that the captain doesn't care what Dad is saying. Um, he's just going to keep fighting. But again, our flagpole all through the middle of this fight. Let's give... Okay, so he's just wonk. Stuck his sword into the flagpole there. He will wrench it out with a great big wide sweep. A clumsy... He's not a, supposed to be a good sword fighter. So he's basically pulled uh, pulled his sword out of the flagpole there. We can leave some little, little divots or little... What do you call them? Yeah. <laughs> Flying out after along the arc of the sword. Meanwhile, the pirate flag bearer simply ducks out of the way. And there's his back, there's his head, and he's ducked down, avoiding the trouble. There's the edge of the bridge, the night sky. Now is our panel with Dad and Alexandra, so I'm going to worry about their placement first. 
So we'll put dad there and we'll put Alexandra there um, nearer to the gates to town, uh, to gate to the posh part of town. Let's make sure we get our word balloon, word balloons in there. Captain, stop and yeah. So what does that leave for us to do with these guys? It doesn't really matter what they're doing as long as they just sort of look like they're fighting. And as long as we're not being too repetitive with our shapes and our scales and that sort of thing. So Captain lunging forward there, but the pirate easily and casually Stepping out of the way. He doesn't break a sweat. And we can put him in front of the... We'll just give the pirate flag more presence here. So we're putting... Basically saying in this panel, putting him in front of the pirate flag, allying him, like making a clear pirate. And on this side we have our allies or, you know, protagonists over on this side of the flag. There is, there's also one more detail. And the first time through, I totally forgot to add it in. There's a mysterious third thing we get to do to add to the value of this fight sequence is we're gonna demonstrate that the pirate flag bearer is very verbose, very wordy, and he's going to basically outline a series of very reasonable requests or very uh, wishes or, or whatever. They've come to town, this is what they want. He's gonna spell it out pretty plainly and in polite language. There's some room here for him to do that. When he talks about what they can offer, now I've mucked this whole thing up, but I would write his dialogue here. I know what it is, but for the purposes of the demonstration, there we go. And in these panels, we're just gonna be continuing the fight, so Let's take some space and continue the pirate's dialogue. There, basically talking about offers. I also said that I would do, or in my earlier version, continue that oh, offers over there. And so what we have left here are two panels with fighting and talking. My previous one, now this is where we were talking about sort of staging and the angles and where what we're seeing from where earlier on this page we, I mean we have to lead into this which has him going over the right hand side of the bridge so I want him coming right to left here I'm gonna differ from my previous thumbnail and we're gonna have the we're gonna we gotta make sure we change up those scales so we'll have the pirate flag bearer here. And he's gonna talk to talk to the wall, the, the people on the wall up here beyond the gate, um, as if the pirate captain hasn't been lunging at him and sweating all over him. And I'll take up a lot of space with the captain in a sort of anticipatory, in animation we would call this an antic. Um, an anticipatory crouching pose. But the pirate does not care. He's gonna just keep talking to the wall as a sort of slight to the captain night sky in the background and then in the last panel we have left here have the pirate flag bearer sort of sweep out of the way and sort of wrap himself in the flag a little bit and a nice imagery nice sort of visual he's gonna pull the flag as he dodges out of the way so he flag bearer is going zoop over to this side of the flagpole while Captain lunges on this other on the other side of the flagpole. 
in my earlier version, I gave us just two captains just for a little bit more, just just for a little fun, just a little uh, more something to look at. And just to demonstrate, just to demonstrate how out of control and how, how ferocious he's trying to be, even though um, he's not quite matching up with the other guy. So there's two of them, so I'm just like, I'm, I'm drawing him twice in the panel. Uh, but it's comics, and you can do that. It's allowed. I check the rules. I check the terms and conditions. Um, and then that sort of this sort of <laughs> looks a little bit silly, um, but the idea is there, and we can refine that a little bit later. It's not, not going to look like he's you know fighting himself or like another character has shown up, because we're going to know by coloring, value, tone, and value. We're going to know what's going on here. This is it's going to read clearly. Um, yeah, he's, he looks a little bit silly there, but let's not worry about that right now. We've got at least <laughs> we have two more opportunities of drawing this page uh, to correct that issue. So that left us with this question. Captain pulls the knife. What's going to happen? Our big story that we're going to tell on page 20 when the reader turns the page is that the captain has skewered himself. Despite the pirate flag bearer's intentions, the pirate has skewered, or the captain has skewered himself on the sword that he lodged into the flagpole. I'm going to continue the sort of flagpole motif. Sorry, let's back up and talk about how he chose to break up these panels. I wanted a few things. One, some an anticipatory sort of drawing here, something to see to make us maybe think, uh -oh, or, but uh, more pertinently, to, I'm going to have this row here of reactions from people in the scenario. So the first panel will basically be the setup for what they are seeing here. And then we're going to illustrate the outcome in this big bottom panel here, and I wanted that to have lots of impact, so I'm giving it lots of space. I'm going to continue the sort of design idea from the previous two pages of having the flag pole right in the middle, and we're gonna make that sword really visually predominant. So it's again, it's lodged into the flagpole. We're going to make sure that the pirate flag bearers silhouette, two things, one that his silhouette is not connecting with that sword, though it's difficult to sort of show that he didn't mean to end up with this sword in the captain's gut, but but we can sort of put him in an ungainly, ducking, tricky, sort of get out of the way pose. And to pair with that, I want the captain here swinging through, following through in a big, basically I want his big soft belly lined up right there for the for the sword to connect with it. I'm gonna give him a big swipe through the panel, his coat flying behind him so that you know we see the white shirt or the vest uh, that he has underneath. So it's a bit of an awkward drawing and I think I might have to take another crack at that. The limitations here are I want to stick to the design idea with that guy. We could Duck this guy out of the way like that. And maybe he puts his hand down, which suggests that his hand down to touch the ground, which suggests that he is less in control of the situation than he usually is. Or maybe his hand is, and he's just going to look completely, fully invested in this swipe through with the dagger. So that's an that's an option. So we could do that, or we could do that. Fill because this leaves us with a lot of space to fill. 
with the flag. We have this opportunity, we might as well break these panels up into, let's give us two over here, just so we don't have, so it's not too matchy-matchy. Um, so we'll have two reaction shots from our guys on this side, our, our allies, let's say, and we'll have one reaction shot from a bunch of the pirates who will be dismayed to see. This is not the flagpole anymore. This is a gutter between pages. Um, they will be dismayed to see, oh, what is this captain idiot brought upon himself? He should probably try to shield his daughter from seeing, but he's just seen it so recently that or it's just happened, it's just happening. So he doesn't really have an opportunity to shield her too much. This is sort of a look up at the people on the wall. I think we have the Provedatore up there. Seeing this, oh, he's shocked, whoops. So, shocked reactions all around. Sort of cringe face from a young pirate. Pirates are gonna be fun to draw. One's covering their face. One might even look away. There, reactions from our people, reactions from the pirates, and to continue that design element down here, and also we're gonna we're gonna end the flagpole and the bridge right there. And also to demonstrate some humanity on behalf of the flag bearer. We're gonna have him He's also he also has to announce to the people behind the wall, like, hey, this guy's still okay. He's he's still alive. We can, like, you can come get him. But an idea I had here was that we could have the flag coming down. We'd, we'd see the boots of the captain, but the flag, I mean, this does kind of send the message that he might be dead, but uh, just, uh, just to hide the horror from people's eyes, the flag could come down. It also, send, it also says, the, if we have the flag come down and cover the body, the mass of the, and the wounded captain um, does say, oh, he's you know, been subsumed or been, been drawn into the pirates. So, got that eerie glow that comes with the pirates. Uh, and that's where we're going to leave it for now, with our lead-in to this fight sequence, the fight sequence and the results of the fight sequence taking up taking up about four pages. Um, four pages, three pages, four pages, well used. And that's where we're gonna leave it for today. So the next step will be to blow all this stuff up using blue pencil on big sheets of paper. Uh, I'm not gonna shoot a video for that because the blue pencil just doesn't show up really well on camera, sort of uh, <laughs> by design. Maybe we'll come back when it's time to start inking some of this stuff, uh, but also in the enlargement process, none of the none of the decisions are too interesting. I basically take what we've established here in these thumbnails, re tighten it, refine it. Um, sometimes there are some some storytelling choices, uh, changes that get made, but for the most part, it's an inter intermediary step and not really <laughs> worth going into in much detail. There we go. We talked a little bit about uh, the pacing, um, surprising our readers when they turn that page, and also keeping them reading by injecting that question into the bottom right corner. Um, we talked a little bit about a little bit about our panel layouts and making those choices. One of my takeaways from working on this sequence is uh, is I, I noticed that I was working. Sometimes you work straight ahead, one first panel, second panel, that sort of thing. Sometimes it just makes more sense to work out of order, to start maybe in the bottom right corner and, and puzzle things together. Just sort of giving us a point A and a point B and doing whatever we need to do to get to from one point to the other. We, with our constraints where we wanted to follow that design idea of the flagpole in the center um, as well as keeping a sort of steady rhythm with those five rows of panels and the rhythm that that establishes. And the freedom that that gives us then to just play around with the figures and the actions and space they occupy. 
And so there we go. With one simple comic, we've managed to achieve world peace. Thank you for joining me on this adventure. I'll see you again in a while. <laughs>